we actually we have Dan Bilzerian's look alike mm-hmm. here today. That is mm-hmm. very true. Okay. The stunt double. <laughs> the stunt double. Yeah. So I was wondering, uh, do you get more girls than Dan Bilzerian? Oh, without a doubt. Every, I figured. I'm gonna say they usually get us intertwined. You know, and be like, "Hey, are you him?" I'm like, of course I am. <laughs> I no, you don't say that. You're like, "No, Dan Bilzerian is me." <laughs> <laughs> Does that ever happen in like the? In any like social, I feel like it happens more at the bars. But like anybody, like just coming on like way too oh, strong. You have no yeah. idea. All I think the that's time. another thing about being a girl. Oh, I'm so time. empathetic. About and it. Get the hints. Just oh, get the hints. Like a, because like song. here's the thing. You? It, it's it's flattering. Oh. Whenever it's flattering, and say one thing. Okay, end of story. But like if if I'm into someone or I'm being like receptive to like the compliment or like them coming up to me or approaching me, like you're gonna know. Like my body language is gonna tell you like, yes, you can keep doing this. But when I'm like physically running from you and like saying, Okay, I have a boyfriend, sorry, I'm leaving me alone by like and they continue to like it's funny, you can literally be running from them. Yeah, like, no, seriously, like, like, I, I did this today. Yeah. Like like literally people men are just very persistent it's something that I've learned they and, like, follow you they literally will more follow so than you. women because like women will like get the hint like okay oh, they're not interested men are like I'm gonna change your mind like and the thing is you're not like you're not gonna change and that your makes, mind that makes them want you more too like that's it's, the thing that it's makes incredibly them you. because like it's scary. a challenge kind of deal yeah it's scary it's really scary like I feel like anywhere I go I have to like carry my pepper spray and be co- like constantly. You, you have pepper spray? Oh, absolutely. No yeah. way. Oh yeah. I, I won't okay. say anything wrong right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> you literally spell it out to them, and they still do not get it. Like no. they just don't. It's but sad. that's kind of weird though, because like I feel like the the stereotypical like love story in movies is oh, like yeah. like the guy like overcoming like the girl kind that of brushing him off. Never. Really? No, <laughs> never. The I, only way that I could see that happening is like no, never. maybe like a friend zone thing, like. If if I was like you know I don't know I, I know you're so talking about if someone's like a really good friend they're like no you're too good of a friend like I could see like years down the line like <laughs> that being like a love story but but when it's just like a creeper that you're like no I'm not into you at all whatsoever not even as a friend you weird yeah. me out like uh-huh. that's never gonna happen but even if- it was kind of the weight cut was hard because I was already cutting weight like consistently you know because um, there's two different ways of cutting weight um, wrestling is like you weigh in right before you wrestle and uh-huh. you have to make weight multiple days in a row and MMA it's like you get all this time to cut weight. You make weight once the night before, and you get 24 hours of recovery. So you can do more weight, you know? Okay. You can cut so more you water eat. weight, okay. you know, stuff like that. Whereas wrestling, it's like you don't have time to rehydrate. You know, you don't need to be cutting 10, 15 pounds of water weight the day of weigh-ins or something like that. Oh, it's actually counterproductive. Exactly. Okay, exactly. I've never knew that. Yeah. Never knew that. So, like, 135, we did, uh, we did a tournament. We did nationals last February, and I can't make... 25 every single day like it's not gonna happen uh-huh. and whatever you fight nationals at if you win nationals uh all the other tournaments for the year so worlds and like all the continental opens so like we're doing the asian open in september um i have to do 135 at that as a part of team usa since that's what i want nationals at okay so we were like okay we're not gonna be able to do 25 so that's why i went 35 so you're gonna be representing the usa yeah yeah, yeah no yeah. way yeah for for what exactly? Uh, so September is the Asian Open, and uh-huh. then November is the uh, Amateur World Championships. Oh wow, wow! Because yeah. like, if creativ- creativity did have a limit, then we wouldn't really know it, would we? We wouldn't know if it does or doesn't have a limit. Yeah, it's kind of like you. It's you, like something you can never find out. You're but, ignorant to your own ignorance, yeah. kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Like, if we were being constrained by creativity, we wouldn't know it. And if there was unlimit- limitless creativity, we also wouldn't know it. So, like, yeah, it's just tough to say. But, yeah. But as far as, it. like, they always say, like, try to imagine, like, a new color. You ever heard of that before? No. Try, try to imagine like, a color you haven't seen that's not, like, a mashup of other colors. I'd imagine before. that's impossible. So that kind of adds to that, like, Is that creativity impossible? and, like, imagination. Yeah. I don't know. I've never heard of anybody being able to do it. Yeah, really. <laughs> what color was it? <laughs> yeah, good point. You can't even like like you can't even comprehend. You can't even comprehend like a, like because you know the primary, secondary colors. Like mm-hmm. Imagine like coming up with like a new primary color. Like what would it look like? Because everything is like a mashup of the primary colors in some sense of form. Because like even if it's like using the secondary colors, those are used using the primary colors. So it really, it'd just be your mind like imagining like a mixture of like maybe green and red, which makes it like more of this color, like more. Like a reddish green. Kind of like how artists are like influenced by other artists and, yeah, yeah, and the, like whatever they're interested in in the first place and stuff. So 
it's like can you ever really create something that's totally so that's, that's what totally new. is right it, yeah. that's what it seems like it seems like it we're builds, building yeah, up, yeah building same off thing like past technology. generations it's like the almost it's like the same thing true pretty much is all humanity you're always just, i feel like there are limits just because i feel like we're limited as human beings like to our well i mean our i think you are abilities but true not, but true. not like me and mark yeah. see this is coming from a limited point of yeah. view so <laughs> I think people would be a lot meaner. They would be. Because <laughs> dogs are like everything that humans should be. Just love and um, I guess not, I guess we shouldn't be ignorant, but they're just like ignorant to like all the problems in the world and they just only know like love and loyalty pretty much. I feel. Absolutely. <laughs> so they're just kind of like perfect little things. Like I, I know me personally, like I, it's with like anger like I'll come home mm -hmm. and I just love to just wail on my dog you know <laughs> and just calm me down <laughs> just just drop kick my like five pound wiener dog I love it <laughs> no but going off of that I, there's this guy I really like and he he has a podcast or whatever and he um I'm sound like I'm like I'm sound like a teenage girl there's this guy I really like <laughs> No, there's this like, this podcast I listen to and this guy described dogs as like portals of love I was like I love that I'm it's so, so true it's so true <laughs> it's so true I love dogs so much and like every dog you meet well I guess not every dog but most of the dogs that you meet are just like they just want to be pet and loved and blah 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 and they don't care what you look like or blah 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 and all this stuff and so they're just like perfect <laughs> yeah, it is. every person there that way. Too. Yeah, hey, hey, love yeah. me, love me, they and just I love want me attention. <laughs> yeah, that's so. awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's funny because you like you can't connect with them as much, but you like love them more than most people. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah, like there's a limited amount of people that I would share my bed with, but my dog goes in my bed every night. And yes, I every night, and like I don't know. And you're not judged for sharing your bed with your dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> You can have eight dogs in your bed. You're fine. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> so it says, some assume pirates wore eye patches to cover up a missing eye or an eye that was wounded in battle. But in fact, an eye patch was more likely to be used in, or be used to condition the eye so that the pirate could fight in the dark. Yeah. Yep. Like I said, I've heard it before, but yeah. Did they ever confirm it was true? See, like, Say, I don't think they really can because. Well, There's I mean, no documents back then. Well, no, you probably can't, but you can probably do like a uh, like a scientific study on it. Yeah, but you'd have you to, like do you'd have to get some guy who volunteers for a couple of months for your eye to actually adapt to that. Well, exactly. You probably get somebody out of prison, or like not probably out of. You don't want to bring him out. You don't <laughs> yeah. want him out. You can keep him in prison. Just give him a little. Yeah, I feel like that's the only time that an eye patch is socially acceptable. <laughs> like, I feel like a crazy old man in prison, or if you're a pirate. You can, you, what else do you wear? If you was in prison with an eye patch, they'd probably be scared of you. Like, this dude's bad motherfucker. Like, he's got an eye patch. Like, you better watch out. You may. I'd be telling people the craziest stories if I had an eye patch. Just how you wash your eye. Yeah. Just normal. Like, it'd, be no, just... Story. it'd be a different story each time I told it. I could see Kevin be like, I got so mad once, my eye just popped out. <laughs> <laughs> he made me so angry at this red light. I stared him down with my one eye. <laughs> Ping. You start getting mad one time, you're like, see, that was only 10% right there. <laughs> see, that was only 10%. You don't want to see me go 100%. <laughs> Slowly but surely, your eye just keeps poking out little by little. Uh -huh. And it just shoots at him. He's like, ah. Oh. Isn't that I think that's a good thing with uh, this last one I did. There was like 14,000 people there. So, uh, and that's, wow. that's something I thought was going to get to me, and I actually, uh, I think I did a lot better with that. Like, I walked out, and it didn't, it was kind of able to channel that almost, like. So, that's what I thought I was going to have to do, um, but honestly, I walked out, and I was like, huh, this is cool, you know? Like, it was, it was, I just made it a lot smaller than what it is, you know? I was like, the cage is the same size, same material, and I'm in the same spot. Like, everything outside of me isn't in the cage, you know? So, it's like, maybe a little louder, but, uh. It's hard to hear stuff when you're in there anyway, so it didn't really change. The people didn't change much. Probably very focused on your, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I pretty much. Do the same old thing that you practice yeah. every like, day. Like, I'm only yeah. listening to my coaches. I'm not listening to that anyway. I think I've gotten good at, like, being able to hear them, like, when I'm out there. So, like, just recognizing their voice in the middle of, like, all the chaos. So. That, that's wild. That's yeah. wild. Yeah.
I've always thought that's this is kind of off topic, but I've always thought that's really interesting. I like you can be in a room of like six people and there can be three conversations going, mm-hmm. and like the human mind is able to like differentiate. Like switch. Yeah. 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 Isn't yeah. that is that kind of weird? Like you yeah. can literally tone out the other conversations going yeah. on while having a conversation mm-hmm. with that one person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you hear it all, but you're not listening to it all. Kind yeah. Of, yeah. But that's that's really important though. Like they, because uh, I, I feel like uh, like in a, like a world stage, or mm-hmm. uh, if if you want to get as big as you want to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I could see that being kind of self defeating for some people. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that that's really awesome that you you would you say you actually do better in that environment or about the same? Uh, or? yeah, cause I I think I, I don't know about better than other people. Um, or I better think, than yourself. Yeah, I think uh, like I, I used to have a big problem with it back when I first started boxing, dude. I didn't hear anything. My coach was like, "Hey, I told you to do this." I'm like, "Dude, I cannot hear you at all." <laughs> I'm in the like, zone right yeah, now. I'm in, I was in the zone. I didn't hear anything at all, and I think just. That's another thing, you know, experience has helped that, you know, having, I had like 20 boxing matches as a kid, I've had probably 100, a lot of wrestling matches, you know, over 100, I'm sure, but, uh, and now all my MMA fights, I think being in different sports, different environments, multiple different times at different places, different size crowds, I think I just learned that like, man, like, all these variables, like, they're gonna keep being variables, they're gonna keep changing, you know, and I can't be like, oh, I have to do this different because of this place. You know, it's just going to be like, like learn about the constants, not the variables and situations like that. Okay. And I think that's what's kind of helped, you know. This is like a very rudimentary way to understand how space time works. Okay. Imagine these circles are all clocks. Like uh-huh. I've seen this before. And obviously the circles are clocks. This is the influence. This is without gravity and this is with gravity. Like this is the gravity warping space time. Like say you can put the sun right here. So if you were to travel from point A to point B over here. Mm-hmm. You pass through all these clocks because time's like a part of sp- like space time. Okay. But see, that same straight line, you'd have to go. You don't actually see it, but you're taking this dip. But since space time is warped, you're going down through all these. And since it, like there's an indentation, this length from right here is longer than just this little short line right here. Oh, it's stretched okay. out. So time also gets stretched out. So going from here to here on this line, you go through more clocks, which is like more time than this. Wow, okay. You should hold up the diagram which, too. That camera. makes a lot more sense how like something that's larger has more gravity, therefore it slows down time more because it's making that dip a lot bigger. But, so, yeah, and like the best way to say is something larger causes more gravity. It doesn't have gravity. It warps space-time, which... Which causes which causes gravity because the Earth is actually okay. the Earth is actually essentially in free fall around the Sun, the whole time. It's just mm-hmm. there's yeah, it's because space time is warped and it's like it, like it's trying to it's like the Earth is taking a straight path through space except space itself is warped around the Sun because of how massive the Sun is. Oh wow! It's like trying to it's like it's like inertia is like taking over for the Earth and like it's still trying to travel in a straight line. It's just being curved because of the sun it's not actually like physically attracted to it because it's so big it's because it's warping space time and it's like an indentation in space so it's kind of like falling in towards it in a way oh wow okay it's like with those quarter machines you know you like let one slide in and it like goes like this down into the circle Uh uh-huh it's kind of like that except except except, except, yeah wow okay or or like the friends that they don't like you you can kind of tell like they might be nice to you and cool to you but like like when I, it's almost like they don't want the best for you. You yeah, know what I mean? Yes, like, like, I do know what you mean. I sense like, like a fakeness almost. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny because like we talk about this because girls have like a major tendency whenever they're like around other girls. I think it's like a defense mechanism. Whenever they want to like appear as like top dog, mm-hmm. they'll be like tell embarrassing stories or say something mean or nasty. Oh, I'd be yeah. like, Natalie, like you kind of look fat in that. Like if I was hanging out with a bunch of guys and I'd say to that seem, just to, just to make myself like, seem like I'm better, you know? Yeah, like or just like say like an embarrassing story like yeah. about them. That you know that that they you, wouldn't want them to other people to yeah, hear, and you'd be like, um, "Why did you just say that?" Because like, it kind of shapes the way that the other people that you're with like views. Just to them. make them exactly. look better, and I'm like, "No, that actually probably makes you look worse because you just look like a mean yeah. person right now." But to, to somebody who's like conscious of that, exactly. yeah, like girls do that to each other all the time. All the time, and I'm like, you'll probably start to notice it now too because like I actually have noticed it. Yeah, I yeah, noticed yeah, it. yeah, and it makes me like I'm like, okay, you know what? You can like be mean to me all you want, but you're the only one that looks bad in this situation yeah, exactly. so that's like exactly. what i think about it at least same even whenever i view other girls doing it to like their friends I, or guys yeah. sometimes guys, guys, do, do, it guys, guys. do it too and i'm like what are you doing like you're the one who looks stupid right now i've had yeah. some friends like start putting me down like at, like especially like i had a really good friend and like we we started hanging out with somebody new 
And um, I don't know. He started like putting me down, and I was just like, "Really?" But yeah. I, I learned from that situation. I'm like, I'm never, never. I mean, that was like eight years ago. Yeah. But yeah. I'm like, I'm never gonna do that to anybody. Yeah. And my mentality with like everybody, especially anybody who's like really close to me, it's like build them up. Like, yeah. like I mean, I just got that that number from you guys yeah. for to get uh, a friend a connection. Exactly. You know, like like if I can help my friends in any way, like I would only want to be a positive influence in anybody's life. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I just feel like, like whenever you're 80 years old, like that's a life you can be proud of. Like, you know what? Like I, I helped him out. I helped him out. Like yeah. I, I took them to new limits and yeah. Why yeah. would you want to be viewed as like a negative person or someone yeah. who said something mean or who did something mean? Like because of how judgmental and stuff they are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's definitely like, it's definitely an eye opener for sure. That's it. That, I think that creates insecurity like across the board too. Mm-hmm. Like for like guys and girls. Cause like, I feel like as a guy, like, in, and, because I, I personally, like, I don't know why, but I've just never, I don't know if it's because I grew up with sisters or what, but I've just never seen the world that way to, like, like, I've had friends like that, that mm-hmm. they're just, like, very, very judgmental and, like, yeah. looks alone. I'm like, like, you're judging her, but I know her, and she's actually a really cool person right. if you take the time to get to know her. Like, she's really good at art or whatever. Yeah. She's good at X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And whenever you're a guy, it creates insecurity for the guy as well because you're realizing, like, okay, there's a girl I just met that I really like. And then questions like, is she hot enough? Yeah, should is I like she her? good looking yeah. enough? Like, will my friends find her attractive? And then mm-hmm. none of that should matter. Right. You shouldn't like be like, you should be able to like care or like who you like, mm-hmm. love who you love, whatever, like without somebody like judging you for that. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It's so annoying. And I like, I've definitely seen that like be- happen many times before. Like, 